Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Well, we've heard about King Edward VIII abdicating the throne because he wasn't allowed to marry Wallace Simpson because she was a divorcee. And I'm curious to know what the royal family felt about all this upheaval, so we're going to find out right now. So it may have been an excuse that he abdicated for love. Because Prince Edward, he had doubts about being a king as early as 1919. The historypress.co.uk stated, he wrote to his mistress, Frida Dudley Ward, I have so often told you, sweetheart, that I'm not half big enough man to take on what I consider is about the biggest job in the world. His father, George V, shared this lack of confidence, telling one court functionary that should ever become king as inevitable, he would wreck the monarchy and the empire. And to Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin, George said, after I'm dead, the boy will ruin himself in 12 months. So to be a king, you have to have discretion. And King Edward VIII didn't go along with that. On a summer cruise around the Greek islands, the new king flaunted his relationship with the still married Mrs. Simpson, forcing her to plead with him to be more discreet. She recalled he laughed at her aside discretion, he said almost proudly, as a quality which, though useful, I have never particularly admired. Although Britain was slowly recovering from the depression of the early 1930s, the economy and society remained fragile. In Europe, the rise of dictators, Hitler in Germany, Mussolini in Italy, posed a growing threat to the peace and to Britain's imperial position. Despite this, Edward made little effort to hide his sympathy with what right-wing authoritarianism. I see we are to have a fascist king, are we? One Labour MP told the Prime Minister Baldwin. The king didn't do his job correctly. When Edward took the throne in 1936, there was a worry about the way the king handled secret papers. The historypress.co.uk said that secret files were left openly on display for any visitor to Edward's Fort Belvedere weekend retreat to see. Socializing with the king were Italian and German diplomats. He was sharing highly sensitive documents with Mrs. Simpson, discussing their contents with her. Interception by the intelligence services revealed that the French and Swiss embassies in London were reporting to their governments on her influence over the king. Foreign Secretary Anthony Eden Van Sardet said he believed that she was in the pocket of the German ambassador and the security implications were obvious. Clive Wigram from the king's private secretary reported to the Lord Chancellor that he was worried about the king's state of mind. He was afraid he might turn into George III. Wigram's assistant complained of the king's irregular hours, which combined with irresponsible attitude to work, made the serious conduct of affairs all but impossible. When Edward wanted to get permission to marry Wallace, it was an opportunity to get him off the throne. The public in England at the time had no idea about all the doubts of the king and his abilities. The BBC had blackened out his relationship with Wallace Simpson, and the United States and Europe knew all about it, though. As official desperation grew, Edward remained popular, a breath of fresh air, a charming and attractive maverick with a frequently displayed and apparently genuinely felt compassion for the unemployed and for the veterans of the First World War. So Edward was removed from the throne December 1936, reluctantly, he stated in his memoirs. Some most of the people, though, felt he had a sense of relief. He was exiled to France, and the former king was rebranded Duke of Windsor. Edward's brother Albert, who restored confidence in the institution of the monarchy when he succeeded, he was taken the title George VI in an act of symbolic continuity. The brothers' relationship deteriorated. Once Edward started seeing Wallace Simpson, the brothers' relationship started to dissolve. During one trip to Fort Belvedere, Elizabeth, who was Queen Elizabeth's mother, was appalled when Simpson broke po protocol and welcomed them instead of deferring to the king. It was a deliberate and calculated display of power, according to one account. The Duchess recognized it as such. Walking straight past Wallace and ignoring her attempted welcome, she said, as if to no one in particular, I came to dine with the king. The Duke of York looked embarrassed and very nervous, and the king looked rather startled. <laughs> so Edward was miserable and wanted to abdicate. And Elizabeth II's father, Bertie, was in disbelief. Albert had been brought up to believe in the idea of duty, duty to his country, and above all, duty to the crown. And the concept that his brother could simply choose to throw it all away was a deeply distressing one for him, exacerbated by the 
tensions that he created. And their mother was having a hard time with it, too. Albert didn't want to be king, but Albert could have cared less about forcing the role onto his brother. He did what he wanted and didn't care about the consequences. According to Deborah Cadbury, the author of Princes at War, the bitter battle inside Britain's royal family in the darkest days of World War II, Bertie viewed the abdication papers with revulsion. Both brothers had signed, they just shook hands, and Edward went outside, feeling like a swimmer, surfacing from a great depth, as he wrote in his memoir. The brothers didn't get along when Edward kept making demands. He wanted his wife to get the title of the HRH, and King George VI didn't go for that. Edward believed that he should be granted a pension from the royal family out of gratitude for his services, but he also lied about the extent of his own personal wealth. And the king, he had a speech impediment, and he was a bit hesitant on the phone when they talked to his brother, whereas his brother, Edward, was very quick on the phone. So King George VI had a lot on his mind at the time, there was all the unrest in Europe and other things, being a king, so he stopped speaking to his brother. Edward was shocked that he didn't think his brother could be tough, and he wasn't used to being told, being told no. Their father, King George V, knew how tough Bertie was, though. He said, Bertie has more guts than the rest of his brothers put together, the late king had reportedly said. He had also failed to comprehend how much the new Queen Elizabeth, who was the Queen Mother, loathed him and Simpson, as she felt that they had ruined her beloved Bertie's life. Queen Elizabeth, which is Queen Elizabeth II's mother, had bad feelings about Edward. She was angry that her husband had to take the king position. She blamed Wallace and refused to acknowledge Simpson in any form. Wallace didn't care for Elizabeth and in private referred to her as Cookie because of her weight and mocked her homely and unglamorous appearance. The Duke of Windsor was just as bitter, referring to his royal female relations as these ice veins. And then uh, Queen Elizabeth didn't mind stating her dislike of Simpson in public. This led to the public having an extreme hatred toward Wallace Simpson. Edward started his new life by meeting with Nazi sympathizers. This didn't give the family much trust in him. In the 1940s, with the war between England and Germany growing more tense, Edward was offered the governorship from far, in far-off Bahamas. The Duke begrudgingly accepted, although the Duchess referred to the post as the Alba of the 1940s. According to Vanity Fair, the Windsors soon found plenty of British and European expats to party with on what Edward referred to as the third-class British colony, yachting with businessmen like Sir Harry Oakes and redecorating the governor's mansion. Edward got to escape, but King George VI didn't. The stress of the war and the abdication no doubt caused them to have an early death. After the war, Edward thought he'd be able to return to England, but his brother, King George VI, wasn't so sure. He didn't trust him. He was further convinced that the, Windsor, that the Windsors were in threat after he discovered the secret Nazi files in 1945, a document that said that the Duke of Windsor had contacts with the Hitler regime. In 1952, the weary King George VI died an early death. His wife would forever blame the strain of being king and Edward attended the funeral but seemed unmoved. He was not especially upset by it. He attended the funeral but was described as jaunty and probably saw his presence there as an opportunity to be photographed and to appear in the public eye once more. So Queen Elizabeth II visited Uncle Edward in France. According to GoodHousekeeping.com, Edward had suffered from throat cancer in the years leading up to his death, so when Queen Elizabeth II and her husband Prince Philip and their son, Prince Charles, paid a visit to the Duke and the D Duchess of Windsor during a state visit to France in 1972. He wasn't well enough to properly receive them. Still, the Queen reportedly spent a few private minutes with him that day. The Queen was reportedly not a fan of Wallace and grew annoyed with her at times. Still, she allegedly greatly appreciated that her uncle put so much effort into paying her the final courtesy of bowing. Ten days later, he died from the complications of throat cancer. Even though the relationship with him and the royal family was rocky, he was allowed burial at the royal burial grounds in Windsor. The queen was gracious and stated, I know that my people will always remember him with gratitude and great affection and that his services to them in peace and war will never be forgotten, the queen said in a telegram following his death. 
the Duke of Windsor was said to have weighed 80 pounds at the time of Queen Elizabeth's visit, according to InStyle.com. He wasn't eating, and he was very, very concerned about his appearance and insisted that he be sitting up in a chair, not in bed, and wearing clothes to hide any tubes like intravenous tubes he had. He had a request for the Queen to give his wife the title of the HRH, and the Queen declined. The Duke felt like it was a slap in his face not having his request granted. But the Queen, she had every right to deny it, because according to George Carey, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, the King, King Edward, chose to put his marriage before the monarchy. That forced this crisis upon our nation, upon his brother, and we have to understand that background, I think, to understand the Queen. But the Queen, she did grant the wish of Duke of Windsor and allow Wallace Simpson to be buried beside him. The Queen Mother and Princess Alice attended the funeral ceremony at St. George's Chapel where she was buried next to Edward. Queen Elizabeth II, Prince Philip, Prince Charles, and Princess Diana were also on hand. So King Edward felt that in his heart he wasn't up for the job of king. According to Fox.com, he was always looking for an excuse. He hated the attention, hated being in the spotlight. He had a difficult relationship with his father. If it weren't for Wallace, he might have used something else. I truly believe it would have been something else that would have made him give up the throne. His decision probably saved England because he was hanging out with German sympathizers and he was loose with the secrets of the country, leaving important documents laying around his house when diplomats from other countries came to his house to party. Queen Elizabeth's father stepped into the position of king and he did a great job. It may have cost him an early death due to the stresses of the job. Albert, he never thought he would be king. Queen Elizabeth and her mother and sister all felt resentment for what King Edward had done. His abdication, though, was a blessing in disguise. If he hadn't have left England, it may have been taken over by Nazi Germany, and that would have been a disaster. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. I also hope that everybody's been having a good day, and tune in again soon for another episode of Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Thank you.